In this video, I'm going to show you ChatGPT's Canvas feature and how to use it. Let's get into it. So I'm going to demonstrate ChatGPT's Canvas feature. Now, this is really useful for any writing or coding task. And what it does, as we'll see shortly, is provides you with a secondary pane on the right-hand side for editing and content curation. Whereas on the left-hand side, you've got your prompts. Now, if you're familiar with Claude and its artifacts feature, it's a similar feature to that. So what we're gonna do is give it a writing task. We're going to ask it to write a blog post on project management skills for NILC training. And I've given it a steer in terms of the types of skills that should be included. So you'll see that we're on ChatGPT 4.0. Now, if you're lucky enough to be on ChatGPT Plus, then you'll have access to the Canvas option, ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. So if I select that, you'll see that the prompt remains in place and nothing else changes at all. But where it gets interesting is that if you give a writing task with the Canvas option, then this is what happens. So I'm gonna fire off the prompt now, and you'll see that this additional pane has been created here, and ChatGPT is busy working away creating the blog post in front of us, whereas the prompt remains on the left-hand side. Now, this is really useful because if you're doing it in the regular chat GPT, you've got to be constantly scrolling up and down as you make changes, and it's not so easy to work with. Whereas let's say that we wanted to make it uh, an 800 word blog post, then I could either update that by putting in a prompt here, or I can either go up to the top here, click the edit message, change that to 800 words there, click on send, and then once again, in the right-hand side, it'll create the blog post for me. So a much sort of easier way of adjusting and updating your prompt. Or we could make other changes such as move paragraphs around or, or something like that, or literally any editing that you want to do via the prompt. However, you can also edit directly in the pane. So if you hover over certain paragraphs, you'll see, or any paragraph, you'll see that there's this little icon here which allows me to select the paragraph. So if I click that, I can make some suggested changes. So for example, I could say, make this paragraph para uh, less formal in tone. So if I do that, I'm then just focused on this particular paragraph or ChatGPT is it's now analyzing this paragraph and it's rewritten it right in front of me, also repeating the changes on the, or confirming the changes on the left-hand side here. So whether you want to work via the prompt method or direct editing, no problem either is possible. And any kind of like editing or suggestion could be made using this plus symbol in the uh, chat bubble. Down here, very interesting number of features via these icons. So first of all, at the bottom here, we've got this pencil symbol with suggest edits. So how this works is that let's say on this paragraph here, we want to suggest some edits. So I'm just gonna highlight that paragraph there. I'm going to click on suggest edits and then what it's going to do it's going to suggest some, some changes for me so I'm just going to do that and you'll see what uh, what happens now so it's now once again looking at the paragraph and it's say it says consider rephrasing uh, to a more precise sentence there and if I like that suggested change I can just apply that it suggests it'll apply make for a smoother flow and reduce uh, formality and a number of other changes here that i can either choose to accept 
uh, or, uh, or or not, including adding a, adding an example. So let's just uh, add an example here, and uh, we will uh, see what ChatGPT does with uh, does with that. So, uh, for example, during a particular stressful project phase, one manager lightened the mood by sharing a funny story during a, a team meeting. So, and once again, you can see that the confirmation is done on the prompt area on the uh, on the left. But, uh, oh, and if we don't want these, we can just uh, remove them there. But there are more options here under this uh, little uh, little panel here. So if we want to adjust the length as well as doing the um, prompt in terms of numbers there, I can make uh, the blog post uh, absolute longest there, or I can make it shorter. So let's go for a slightly uh, shorter post, fire that off, and then once again, it'll rewrite the uh, post into a, a slightly shorter post. You can see that it's going through it now and uh, thinning out some of the words and, uh, and content to uh, make each paragraph shorter and therefore the whole thing shorter. Next option is reading levels. So this will adjust the uh, tone. So if we go to the uh, slide this to the top, we've got uh, right at the top, we've got graduate school, college, high school, other options, keep the current level right down to kindergarten. So writing it for kindergarten uh, level. So let's go, let's make it quite um, technical and for a sort of graduate school audience. So let's click on that and it's going to once again rewrite it for that kind of audience. So pr pretty neat and quick way of being able to uh, to make that uh, that change uh, change there next up uh, still just uh, finishing off uh, off that one uh, so it's confirming it on the on the left is this option which is adding final polish so after perhaps you've made all these changes and also direct editing which I'll come on to in a second you can run the uh, final polish uh, option and this is quite fun if you need to add emojis so if you're working on say a whole bunch of social media posts probably more likely you're going to add emojis to those than a than a blog post you can you can do that but you can just direct uh, edit here so if I'm working uh, within this um, uh, panel here you can see I've got the uh, got the cursor so let's say um, that I um, I want to change uh, proficient to top quality. So all I need to do is just change that to a top quality project manager. So I can literally edit and type over uh, anything uh, anything here. Uh, I can also uh, make, because um, this is the heading here, so perhaps this is a bit, um, <coughs> excuse me, a bit too uh, small uh, because it's um, basically the heading one, whereas uh, these are heading two and yet they're larger. So I can just click on that and make it a, a heading heading one, uh, which for some reason got a bit of a, an issue with that. Not sure why that's not working, um, but no problem. I'm pretty sure when we run the uh, polish up option, it will um, change that for us. Uh, so let's just put in a couple of um, deliberate spelling mistakes. So let's put in a couple of extra Y's there on the first uh, paragraph and we'll also um, misspell N-I-L-C by putting uh, N-U-L-C and we'll see, if, we'll see if that picks that up. So we'll now go back to this icon here to apply our final polish. So it'll now run through the uh, um, blog post here and uh, it hasn't actually put in the uh, heading one there which is um, a bit of a shame uh, normally it does correct things like that but it has uh, removed the Y's the extra Y's here uh, let's scroll to the bottom and see if it's changed uh, NILC so let's just go back to the bottom and yeah it's picked up that spelling mistake uh, there which is uh, which is great so other than the uh, heading, um, let's just try once more. Uh, it's pretty much done a, a top uh, top job uh, there. Uh, so let's just go to this and heading one. No, it doesn't seem to like it. Let's just put it down a phrase there. Go back to there and click on that. No, it must be a little bit of a bug or something going on there. But anyway, if we're happy uh, or reasonably happy with the blog post, we can then just click on copy and then go and paste that into our web editor and publish the blog. So there you go, a demonstration of 
ChatGPT's Canvas and how it can really be quite useful for a writing task, but you can also use it for coding.